Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this tutorial, we'll be doing this Photoshop low poly art effect, and we're making this from this photograph right there. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and share, and also subscribe. I'm currently doing new Photoshop videos every Thursday. On Saturdays, it's something random, usually Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. On Monday, I'm doing Photoshop Elements videos, and on Tuesday, just for the fun of it, some Minecraft stuff. Okay, let's get to it. This Photoshop low poly art effect is actually very straightforward, very easy to do. It just takes knowing a few tricks to get this thing right. Now, we'll be basing this on a photograph, as you can see right down there. There it is. And let's go ahead and get to that photograph. I'll just close this down. No need to save that, already been saved. Here's the original photograph. Now you can download this from my website. There's a link for downloads in the description. The first thing we need to do is to zoom in and crop into the head right here. So let's just go ahead and grab the crop tool. I have my crop set here to one to one. It's a square crop. And then just grab one of the corners out here. And let's just pull this in so that the wolf is basically about that size. Kind of nicely fits inside that square area. I'm putting it so that the nose is just about centered in this bottom square. And I go a little bit larger, I think, on that. Make our crop a bit smaller. And that looks pretty good right about there. Okay, so click the check mark to finish the crop. We now want to make sure that the wolf is centered and that he's perfectly vertical. So for that, let's drag in a guideline here from the left hand side. It should snap to center. There it is. Let's go back here to the standard move tool while I'm at it. Now go over to the layers, right click versus background and duplicate layer. Choose OK and then hide the original. That's just our safety because we'll be changing the pixels on this layer. So I want to keep this background just in case we mess up. We can always go back to that one for the safety. Since we cropped in on the photo, this might also be a good time to go ahead and do a save as on this to a different file name. So file, I'll do a save as. There we go, I'll just call this one Low Poly Wolf. There we are. And choose Save. Okay, now let's do Control T keyboard shortcut. Brings up our control handles and let's come just outside the corner here and let's rotate this and try to get the wolf side. It's nicely centered. Right about there I think is pretty, pretty good cropped it in and then rotated a little bit so we have a nice straight vertical line right through the middle of the wolf's head right there. Okay now let's just click on zoom and fit screen. The basic concept here, let me show you just one example on the basic concept. We'll be making our polygons left hand side, we're just doing triangles and everything is on the left hand side of this center line. So you come out of the center line here, find a nice spot like right down here Click, pull out, find a nice spot here, and let's just pull one straight across, right about there, and back to the beginning again. Makes a triangle like that. Then go up to Filter, and if you come down to Blur, and then over here to Average, what it does is it blurs the whole thing out and gives you the average color inside of that triangle. And then deselect. That's the basic concept on this. What I like doing is getting my first triangle in place. Then I'll zoom in and make everything in tighter zoom. One of the things you want to do here is to keep your triangles pretty good size. Larger is better than smaller. We'll have to go small around the eyes. We'll have to go a little bit smaller around the ears just because there's detail. The more detail, the smaller the triangles will have to be. There's some detail, of course, down there in the nose right in here, be a little bit smaller in here. But for the most part, try to have medium size triangles. A little larger, again, is better than a little smaller. Now when I do this, what I'm doing is I'm holding the mouse button down with the zoom control and go left or right. There's left, there's right. That's called a scrubby zoom. See the options right up there. It's a real easy way to get a nice clean zoom on that. So I'll just back out just a little bit right about, right about there is pretty good. 
And you can see up here, the fur coloration changes right there. Above that, it's lighter. There's kind of a separation right here. So that's a good spot for my next point. So to continue, what you want to do is make your next triangle, and you want to overlap just a little bit into this triangle. This is the most important part, really, is make just a slight overlap. Only has to be about one pixel or so. So real slight, but make sure you get that overlap. Otherwise, you'll be seeing lines in between your triangles, and you don't want that. A little more overlap is better than a little less overlap. So I'll go right here, pull it straight across. I have just a little bit of an overlap in there. Pull it up about to here, and then right back to the beginning of that triangle, making another nice little triangle. Okay, let's go ahead and filter. Now the last filter you used will be at the top up here. There's also a keyboard shortcut, Alt plus Control plus F to repeat your last filter. Click on that. And then on your options up here for the polygonal lasso tool, make sure it's set at New, right there, New Selection. You can then just click inside the old one. It will then deselect that. Okay, so that's the basics. So you want to start out large and then work smaller. If you take a look at the image and kind of plan your next triangles. Like I can do one right from the corner of the ear here. It's a good spot. Let's go up here to the top of this triangle. Again, just overlapping just a little bit so that I'm over that triangle just a bit. See, here, here's outside. You want it just a little bit inside like that. And then back up to your starting point right there. Same thing. Makes that new triangle click inside and that goes away. So that's the basic way of making this whole project is just a matter of making these triangles and overlapping your triangles as you go. I'll just make a couple more down here. Then I'll do some of the detail things. Let's bring this right about here. See there's kind of a dark area in the ear it comes down to here. That's a good spot for that triangle. And then come down to this connection right here. You always want to go to these points where your triangles meet. And again, make sure you're overlapping just a little bit on that and back up to the beginning. And once again, let's go ahead and average that. Now the face is just going to be doing this, making larger triangles if possible, going smaller if you have to. I will go ahead and I'll finish this off, all these little triangles, but I'll do it in high speed. So you can go ahead and watch that built pretty quickly in high speed. We'll then talk about the last steps once we get this half of the wolf finished. Okay, back to normal speed, and so far, so good. Now we need to make a selection around the wolf right here and straight down the middle. So I'll just zoom in on this, get it nice and tight. Same tool again, and just inside. And then just work your way around the edge, just like that. When you come to a spot right off picture, just hold the space bar down and reposition everything and work clear around the whole outside edge of the picture there we go and make a nice selection just following those outside edges of the polygons and take it clear over to the center come right onto the center mark and then pull straight down Just like that, right down to the very middle, and then straight across the bottom to our starting point, and back to fit screen. That makes this whole bit selected. Let's now use that selection to make a layer mask for that. Click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask. 
Now, let's take this layer, duplicate this layer, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK, go up to edit, come down to transform and flip horizontal, and pull that over so it just touches right there. Let's just hide that middle guideline. Go ahead and clear that guide out. There it is. Looks good. Let's now put a new layer in above our background layer here. So we'll do a new layer right there, new layer button. And let's fill that with black. And there we go. Now because this is all kind of hand drawn, every time you do this it's going to come out a little bit differently. It, it will never be the same, exactly the same, any two times in a row. So you may need to do this a couple of three times and make it just the look that you want. You can also go back of course and modify and adjust this at this point. Let's say I wanted to have more of what's down here, a bit more brown tones. That's easy to do. Let's first go up here to these two layers. These are the two Fox layers and then this is our background layer. I'm going to use the Control, Shift, Alt, and E keyboard shortcut that copies all these layers up onto a new layer up there, merges them all together to a new layer. There it is. I'll now grab the magic wand and let's make sure that the contiguous is checked right there. Okay. This time it should just select touching triangles and I'll just get all of these right in here selected. Now that I have those selected, let's go ahead and change the color a little bit on those. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and let's do Hue Saturation. A little bit darker. And be a little more saturation. Should give us more of a brown effect. There we are. Choose OK and then deselect. Last little bit is he looks like he's a little bit too low on the page here. So I'm going to just move him straight up just a bit on the page like that. And then I'll fill that bottom bit with black. And that looks pretty good. So there you go. That's all there is to it. As you can see it takes a little bit of time to do this. As you can see by that fast motion stuff. But it's really well worth the effect once you have gotten used to this, you can do it a couple times to get just the look that you want. And again, pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. It just takes a little bit of time to get through the process. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and replay this whole video here in fast motion from the very, very start, in case you want to see this whole thing go through, start, clear down to the finish.